Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will be looking at the 12900KS. I organized three retail CPUs. So those are not samples from Intel. Those are ordinary retail CPUs from a store. And I just want to get an idea of the silicon quality of the CPUs, how they would perform versus a very well binned 12900K because that's what I think would also be the most interesting use case for you out there. Because I think the like target group for this CPU is that you want to overclock your well, 12900K, and then you can get a KS, which is basically a binned 12900K. We also did a video about a very well binned 12900K a few weeks ago, and I just want to see how this compares with this SP97 CPU. At the same time, I also have a little bit mixed feelings versus Intel right now, because I'm not sure what's going on behind the scenes at Intel. Originally, I was supposed to receive a sample like one and a half weeks ago, which they already promised like over a month ago. And obviously we're also like looking at our like video schedule and planning videos ahead. And then I, when I asked them, they told me like five days ago, when I asked like, where's my sample? Because I didn't get anything yet. And I was wondering if it's maybe like lost, like if the package got lost. And then they told me, ah, yeah, we're not sampling any 12900KS to any reviewers. And then I was like, okay, that's interesting. And at the same time, the CPU was already on sale at like Newegg and also a French distributor. Like there are already retail CPUs out there. There is a tech power up review, which is by the way, great. So if you want to dig into normal numbers then you can just go to tech power up, but it's just a very messy launch. Not sure what Intel is doing right now, but yeah. Apart of all that, I think let's just dig into the CPU and what kind of silicon quality we can expect. No CAT and also not a 12900KS, but highly efficient AMD Ryzen cores, up to 16 of them. That's what you can get with Hetzner's AX servers. And right now you can save the setup fee, which means that depending on your server choice, you're saving between 40 up to $108. The offer is valid for the AX41 with Ryzen 5 3664 GB of memory and up to the AX101 which is using the 5950X with 128 GB of memory. And this one is also featuring two 3.84 TB NVMe drives. And of course with gigabit connection and as usual no minimum contract period. You can find the details to the offer in the link in the description down below. A quick and short summary so you know what kind of setup we're using and what kind of like temperatures you can get for comparison. I'm using a normal 360 radiator. It's basically a tiny custom water cooling loop. You could always extend that further like a Mora or whatever if you wanted to, if you have the cooling capacity in your case. But I think that's like very representative when it comes to cooling testing. We're using the normal Corsair block. We have a 6400C36 kit Corsair Dominator Platinum and the Asus Maximus Apex board. As you can see on my notes, I already started testing and finished my pretty well binned 12900K, which is the SP97, also noted down the PCB number just for my orientation, so I don't mix up any CPUs. You can see the P-Core and E-Core SPs noted down for each CPUs. Then the auto voltage, so if you just enter the BIOS the first time without adjusting anything, the kind of VID it's showing. Then First test on 5G on the CPU, 4 GHz on cache and E-cores, 1.25 on V-core, load line calibration 5. Then checking for like power draw and the maximum temperature, the V-min it takes for the setting. And then also what is the CPU capable of max value wise. So 5.3, 1.40 for example for my SP97 CPU. And then we will later continue the testing with those 1200KS CPUs, all three of them have the same batch. One difference I can spot, like from the outside, is that the KS has this QR code on bottom, which is missing on the normal K, but that's it. Should be identical CPUs. One quick side note regarding the voltages, which I also wrote down on the paper. Those nodes were taken with load line calibration 5 and the value as set in Turbo V Core. But the values we will later check will be the values I'm checking with my digital multimeter. So for example, if I'm now checking the voltage in idle, it's like 1.225. And if I'm now running a Cinebench and check the value again, can see it's dropping to 1.125. And the values which we will later discuss in the video will always be the load values measured with the digital multimeter. I now switched to the first 12900KS, but I'm wondering why the SP value is only 86. I kind of expected this to be a bit higher. And if we go to Extreme Tweaker AI features, 
the P core SP is 93, E core 73. That is not that high, like compared to my bint 1200K. But the, the VID, look at this, like the VID is insanely high. I will now continue testing the rest and then we will compare all the data. I am done with my testing and I'm also a bit disappointed. But yeah, let's get to the SP values first. In this chart on the total left, the 12900K has an SP of 97. This is the highly binned CPU. Next to it, the 12900K with an SP of 80 is like a very average random 12900K CPU. The binned 12900K has an SP on the P core of 105 and the random one has 89. Now if we switch over to the 12900KS, we can see all of them are pretty much equal, like 93, 92 and 94. Whereas within the 12900Ks, as you can see, there could be a huge variation. And as I already pointed out, I then switched to a fixed clock of 5GHz on the P cores and also a fixed V core set in Turbo V core of 1.25V. And then I was checking for power consumption and temperatures. And pretty much similar to the SP value, we can also see a bigger variation within the normal 12900K CPUs going from 204 and 169 watt. But you also have to keep in mind that 5G at 1.128 volt measured is not the highest power draw you can get on a 12900K. But within the 12900KS CPUs, they were more similar from 202 to 207 watt. And we can see the same kind of picture if we check for the max temperature in R20 at a given setting, where my SP97 CPU is still the one with the highest core temperature with 76 degrees Celsius. And also the KS CPUs are very similar again. The five CPUs we had in the test today were all performing very similar in regard of max temperature and also peak power consumption. At the same time, in a previous video, like I think a month or two months ago, we also had CPUs which had a variety of like 10 or 15%, which was not the case in this test. And here we have a clear winner with the SP97 CPU, 1.052 volt required as a minimum to pass 5 gigahertz R20. Now if we switch over to the random SP80 12900K, it almost requires 80 millivolt more to pass the same kind of frequency. Looking at the 12900KS, they all required a higher voltage than my bint 12900K. Not much, but maybe like 20, 30 millivolt. But in the end, the only thing that really matters is what clock can you reach and which voltage is required to reach this clock. It's also always cooling limited, obviously, but everything was using the same kind of cooling method. And again, a clear winner, the SP97 CPU. 5.3 GHz, 1.25 volt. One 12900KS was coming pretty close, also 5.3, but 1.264 volt. And all the other CPUs could not pass 5.3, even though I tried a lot higher voltages, but then they potentially would just reach the temperature limit. Now going back to the part where I initially said I'm a bit disappointed. Because when you just saw all these numbers and keeping in mind that I have this SP97 CPU, yeah, if you have a very good spin sample, then the KS could potentially be worse, or I'm quite sure that most of the KS will be worse. On average, the KS will probably reach more similar results, like they will probably all be in the same kind of like class, like power class, same kind of clock class. At the same time, we also have to keep in mind, I only had three CPUs to test. It's better than a single one, but like 100 ones would be better and also like looking at different batches. But then again, also if we look at the history with like the 9900KS, they are not that many batches out there. They probably won't produce the KS for a long period of time because it's like a lot of binning which is required from the KCPU. Yeah, I'm not sure if it makes sense to hunt for KS CPUs if you already have a great K. Because I already read some comments from guys like on a Discord, they will hunt for good KS CPUs. But if you already have a very good K, then might not be a good idea. At least just from judging from these three samples. That might also be why Intel was acting so weird, like not sampling this out to reviewers, because it's not that spectacular. Obviously the strength will be if you don't load it to 100%, like if you don't load all the cores, let's say in gaming, if you only have load on four cores, then you can have the boost to like 5.5, 5.4, depending on your load. But that's something in theory, the KCPU can also do. Like if you configure it correctly in the BIOS, if you have a good sample, then you can reach exactly the same than what the KS is doing. 
but with the KS you don't have to configure it, it will do it automatically. So that's probably the, the benefit. Otherwise, I'm not impressed. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.